Hello and a very warm welcome to the 2024 Bethune-Cookman Football National Signing Day Show. My name is Michael Trillo. Happy to have your company live from John L. Bryan Senior Practice Field here on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University. I'm joined by head football coach Raymond Woody. Coach Woody, this has been an interesting year for you. You're coming up on almost a year as the head coach of this program. Um, just kind of walk me through how the year has gone. Well, having the opportunity to come in and hit the ground running, you know, our coaches, I thought coached hard, you know, our players played hard, and uh, it's a bright future. This is your first full recruiting class as a head coach. It's last year you came here after National Signing Day. You didn't have a full off season. What's the process been like uh, since the season ended? Well, I mean, we knew coming in that it was going to be some holes to fill, you know, especially in the trenches and, you know, just being able to evaluate our roster. I mean, coming in in the spring, you know, obviously first uh, signing day for me when I got the job, it was after signing day. So I, I really didn't know who I had on the football team because I didn't recruit those guys. But I tell you what, those players that we have on our football team, you know, they fought to the very end and then just looking at what we need. I feel like we addressed some uh, holes and we filled some holes. You mentioned the trenches, but what kind of players did you look for specifically this offseason? Well, you know, I go back to our football philosophy. I mean, smart, you know, fast, physical and aggressive. And, and you know, obviously we want to get size. You know, we, we use the term big people beat up small people. You know, so we I thought we got length. I thought we got speed and I thought we got size. This is your first year as head coach at BCU, and you've been all over the country, right? How is recruiting, both as a head coach, but specifically at Bethune-Cookman University, different from some of the other places you've been? Recruiting is all about relationships. I mean, a lot of these guys that uh, ended up committing to us, and obviously that signed mid-year, you know, it was all about relationship, and I really am blessed of the experiences that I had, you know, to be able to nationally recruit. You said you were a player here. So as an alum of Bethune-Cookman, did you find it easier to kind of sell the school to potential recruits because you know the culture, you've been a part of it? Well, I, I wouldn't say easy, but I would say, um, you know, thankful that administration hired me as an alumni and, you know, the program that we so dearly love and, you know, getting back to our winning ways, I understand that, you know. I mean, I was here, you know, when we won and, and uh, this program is all about, you know, winning in the classroom and on the field. And as a student athlete, you know, I was an academic football All-American. So if I could do it, I explained to these guys, I didn't have everything, you know. I worked for whatever I was given and it wasn't a lot, you know. So if I did it, I want to model that behavior and have these players follow because I walk the walk and I talk the talk. What are some of the things that you pitch to recruits when you're talking about Bethune-Cookman University and playing for this football program? Well, I, I tell them all the time, guys that we recruit, we're recruiting them to come in and play, you know, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're going to try to recruit the finest student athletes in the state of Florida and around the country. And we tell them, you know, come here, you'll have an opportunity to play right away. And then that's just what it is. It's a competitive world. You know, you do something, I do something. Let's go back to last season a little bit, your first season at the helm. What are some of the things you learned last season about yourself and about this program? Well, you know, this program obviously is a program with high standards um, coming in just to alignment. You know, you cannot forget the little things, you know, and uh, it seemed like all last year, you know, we was teaching them how we want this program to run. You know, I really want a player-led team, but, you know, just the simple things. On time means late. Get to meeting 15 minutes early. You know, when we say everybody wear white socks, that means everybody wearing white socks. So we want to be uniform, we want to be aligned, and, and, you know, not taking a big step as far as looking at the big things, but just the little thing. It's all about the details, and that's what I've learned. I mean, with these guys, you can't assume anything. You got to teach them every step of the way. And then once they know, they know. And then now you have the player-led team that you want because now they know what to expect. 
What are some of the challenges that you had to overcome last year as a, as a first year head coach? Well, you know, when you come in and, uh, you know, guys are used to certain things, you know, the standard is a standard. I mean, obviously, this is how you're going to do it and, and we're going to stick by it. And I just think, you know, the standard is a standard and sometimes you're going to lose your better players along the way who don't want to do it the way you want it done, you know. But I think what you, when you're doing that, you're building a program the right way when you stick to the standard. Let's talk about recruiting a little bit. In, in this new age of, of college athletics, knowing how to use the transfer portal and get guys out of the portal is, is so important. What is your philosophy when trying to recruit players that have already been a part of the college ecosystem? Well, you know, I don't look at uh, the transfer portal as just going out getting guys. I mean, obviously, those guys got to be, you know, good people. You know, they have to have good character, obviously. Um, good um, grades and then also uh, ability. That's why you're recruiting them because they're more seasoned guys. And like I say, throughout my career, I've had opportunity to go around the country to meet different prospects, to coach alongside of coaches that's now at other programs. And it's all about relationships, you know? So if people call me and say, hey, you know what? You have a need for experienced guy up front. I'm gonna tell you about this individual and, and I, I really value relationships because when you're going out recruiting in a transfer reporter, you wanna be careful who you bring in your home because you don't want bad locker room guys. And I think that's what we've done so far, you know, with relationship, we recruited the right guys to come in here. And, and so far it's been pretty good. We've talked about your philosophy as a head coach with what you want your team to look like. Now let's take a look at some of the players who you have brought in. Let's take a look at some of the mid-year transfers. Talk about maybe two or three of the guys you're most excited that BCU Nation to watch on the field this year. Well, well, I would say all of them, you know, but, it, you know, if you want to, um, you know, I have to start with uh, the surprise, Raymond Woody III, you know, he, he uh, surprised me during Christmas. I feel like he's a, a air traffic controller type. He's smart and he's fast, he's physical and aggressive, the philosophy that we have here. And, and I'm really excited about him. And, uh, you know, we have uh, Isaiah Momolonga, offensive lineman, you know, from Iowa, who's, uh, who's 6'5", you know, 300 pounds, athletic, gonna help us anchor, you know, one of those tackle positions. And Dallas Corbett, you know, 6'5 and a half, defensive end, you know, from uh, University of Central Florida, you know, former basketball player, you know, got bend, got good hands, fast twitch, and he's definitely a guy that hopefully can get us off the field on third down. You know, he's a pass rushing special. And a lot of these guys, they want to play. I mean, you know, it's what, 4,000 guys in the portal? I mean, it's a reason right there in the portal. And, and so, some of these guys, especially if they only have one year, you know, it's all about playing. You know, if you want to go to the next level, I mean, the NFL will tell you it's all about what you do as far as production on the field. I mean, that, that guy may be a four or five star, but if he's not playing, then he's no star. Talk about Truth Moody, offensive lineman, Spruce Creek High School right here in Daytona Beach. And beyond that, how important is it to recruit this local area? I know you also have Javon Ross, a DeLand High School guy in, in the class as well. Well, I, I tell you what, uh, in, in you know, speaking about um, the area and the local guys, you know, when I got hired, I mentioned to everyone, to the administration, that I was going to take care of the Wildcat territory first. And that's what we're going to do. I mean, we've been out in the schools, you know, throughout uh, recruiting, taking care of our home first. But Truth uh, Moody, I mean, he's a man state. You know, we need a guy that's going to anchor with the length, you know, on one of those bookends. Coach, talk about some of the staff members that help you out in recruiting because it, it's not a one-man show. You have a whole team behind you. Well, the whole operation, administration uh, included. Um, you know, our offensive staff, you know, our entire defensive staff, um, our recruiting staff, you know, Gene Destin, first-year recruiting coordinator, um, Coach uh, Fagan, you know, general manager, do all the ordering. I mean, you got Jamal Rogers, who's a recruiting assistant. So um, everyone plays a big part. You know, our director of ops, uh, Tim Weston, and Tyler Berrigan, the whole complete staff made this work. It doesn't take just one person, but it takes a complete staff working together. And uh, I, I want to give kudos to all of those guys for helping us have a successful recruiting class. Coach, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.
Coming up next on the 2024 National Signing Day Show, we'll talk to offensive coordinator Joe Gerbino about his offensive philosophy, and we'll meet the offensive side of the 2024 signing class. Come to a place where academic excellence meets cultural diversity, where you can meet friends from all over the world, expanding your horizons. It's a place where learning extends beyond the classroom, where professors are not just educators, they're mentors guiding you towards success. Where community matters, and we take pride in giving back to those around us. It's where athletes pour their hearts into the game, leaving nothing behind on the field. Where dreams take shape and futures are built. Bethune-Cookman University, where your story becomes a legacy. Don't forget that you can catch Bethune-Cookman basketball on the Cat Eye Network. With four home games remaining at Moore Gymnasium, you can catch BCU women's and men's basketball against Prairie View A&M, Texas Southern, Alabama A&M, and Alabama State, as well as the SWAC basketball tournament in Birmingham, Alabama. That's four home games and the postseason right here on the Cat Eye Network. Welcome back to the 2024 National Signing Day Show. I'm now joined by offensive coordinator Joe Gerbino. Coach, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me tonight. Appreciate it, y'all. Coach, what are some of the things you learned in your first season at Bethune Cookman? Man, um, great season, great program, surrounded by great people here. Um, long season, I think you could see the development and the growth within the guys as the season went on. I was really happy to see just the camaraderie within our team and our staff and our program and just how much better that we got day to day and week by week and game to game. You're also the quarterback's coach. Obviously, there was a ton of challenge at that position yes, last sir. year. What did that position group kind of go through, and how did they grow as the season went on? Yeah, as you guys know, if you guys saw um, Walter Simmons, uh, Luke Sprague, uh, Talik Bethea, even a Dom Ponder coming in a couple times. Um, you guys saw Walt Simmons started out the season, got a lot of time against Memphis, and then ended out the season playing against FAMU as well. Luke Sprague was able to come in sparingly um, in between injuries and show what he could do. If you guys watched some of that Texas Southern game, you saw some, some sparks and some flares from him. And then if you guys watched the Mississippi Valley game where Tyleek Bethea kind of had his show, and then the Alabama A&M game where it swung back to Walter and he had over 150 rushing and three touchdowns. So what was interesting this year is we technically won three different games with three different quarterbacks having the majority of the snaps in that game. So just the resiliency of that group and the togetherness of that group. It was truly a we over me approach with those guys. You started at uh, Utica College D3 level. How would you describe the jump from D3 to D1, especially coming into the SWAC? Yeah, so I, there was a lot of similarities actually. I mean, football is football. The dimensions are the same. It's 53 and a third width of the field and still 11 v 11. So whether you're playing cover four or you're playing an odd front, it really remains the same. What I will say though is just um, the biggest adjustment for me was that I was at the previous place for so long and you kind of take for granted that you're calling plays for six, seven, eight years and having the same people hear the same thing the same way for so long. So teaching everybody a new language at the same time all at once, that was a big difference. Um, being in the SWAC is awesome. The history and the tradition around the programs is great. The stadiums that we play in are phenomenal. Um, learning the differences between some of the schools and where the coaches have been and some of the schemes that they're running. It's always just a new and interesting challenge to figure out who you're playing and what, what are the best things to, to do to give you the best chance of success. What types of athletes do you think will excel the most in this conference? That's a great question. Um, for us, I think as coaches, it's our job to match the personnel. It's our job to find out who the best players are, who should be on the bus, and you know how we should line them and what should, we should do with them and highlight their strengths. So for us, I think what I saw this first year in the SWAC from an offensive coordinator looking at the defenses, the pass rushers are elite in this conference. I think you see a lot of the, more of the talent is dispersed amongst the pass rushers, those edge guys and those secondary players. I think you get like long rangey athletic corners that can play man, 
I think you get guys and defenses that can get after the passer with just three or four rushing. Let's talk about the incoming class, the offensive guys that you and the other coaches went out and recruited. Um, who are some names that you think that the fans will be excited to see this year? Man, okay, so we, I think we had a good little blend. We have two Juco guys coming in, um, an offensive tackle, Isaiah Mamalonga, and we have um, a Swiss Army knife, Serafel Seifu. He goes by Surf. So you can see him playing on the perimeter. Right now he's getting reps on the interior at center. We have a couple transfers that came in. Malik Huggins, who went to Southeast High School locally here, transferred from Gardner-Webb. He was a high school quarterback, shifty, electric, dynamic, um, return guy and playmaker as a slot. Um, don't want to just label it, him as that. You can probably see him other places. Sean Russ, Arizona State transfer, um, was the defensive back over there. He's going to play an offensive side for us. You can see him do some different things. Uh, Thomas Nance, who's a triple threat tight end. He could play in line as a sniffer in the backfield and detached as a slot. And a Courtney Reese from UNLV. If there's one true freshman coming in that you think the players and the team are going to be excited to have in here, who is that? Yeah, so for us, we have a, um, a guy from Trinity Christian, Jalen Booker. We have a guy from Monarch, Melvin Puckett. Those are two of our first two linemen that kind of hopped in the boat with us. We're excited about those guys. They've been bought in all along. Did the process the right way. Um, Nassim Dees from New York. Nazo, he's a quarterback dual threat guy. He's got some upperclassmen that he can really learn from. And one of the biggest surprises of the recruiting season was three star out of St. Thomas Aquinas, William Roberts. Big interior lineman for us. Uh, kid with a lot of pedigree, won four state titles in high school. So I think our staff did a great job recruiting. I think we do it the right way. I think we build relationships and these guys know what Bethune Cookman's all about, and they're here for the right reasons. Coming up after the break, we'll talk to defensive coordinator Robert Wimberly and get his take on this year's recruiting cycle. Come to a place where academic excellence meets cultural diversity, where you can meet friends from all over the world, expanding your horizons. It's a place where learning extends beyond the classroom, where professors are not just educators, they're mentors guiding you towards success. Where community matters, and we take pride in giving back to those around us. It's where athletes pour their hearts into the game, leaving nothing behind on the field. Where dreams take shape and futures are built, Bethune-Cookman University, where your story becomes a legacy. Spring is almost here, and with it, the return of Bethune-Cookman baseball to historic Jackie Robinson Ballpark. Claim your seat now by purchasing BCU Baseball season tickets and catch all the action as the Wildcats host 30 games at the Jack. Head coach Jonathan Hernandez and the Cats welcome in teams from Northwestern, UCF, USF, and the SWAC Eastern Division to headline the schedule. BCU Baseball and Jackie Robinson Ballpark. It's a double play for the entire family. Raymond Woody III, safety, graduate. My backstory, 2019, I uh, came in, went to Florida State for two years. First year, freshman year, and then second year was COVID year. Had some pretty good success, played a lot. Ended up transferring to Cal after the COVID year. Had a good experience up there. I mean, got a chance to go from Florida to California, really coast to coast. It was a blessing. Got an opportunity to graduate from the number one public university. I think it was all God's plan, like, gave me the opportunity to play my last season down here in Daytona. Things I like about Daytona, I love Bethune Grill, I ain't gonna lie. Man, that chicken, I ain't gonna lie, that's probably the best out. Like, I was just telling some of my friends, like, when y'all come down, we gotta slide Bethune Grill, I mess with it. Obviously the weather, you know, it's nothing like Florida weather. Just being in the West Coast, they had good weather too, but I like the heat. Uh, when I made the decision, I mean, I entered the portal, had a lot of schools reach out to me, which was a blessing, but it really just came down to just doing what was right. I know I uh, talked to my family, my mom, brother, sister, like just the opportunity to be able to come back down at home and play in front of them, talk to my granddad, always joking around with me, like saying, oh, you need to come down, come down here. That's my dad's dad. 
stuff like that. So just was talking to him a lot and just the opportunity to be in front of my family and then kind of how the decision came about. It was what, Christmas Eve, I decided, I was like, man, I'ma just go ahead and commit on Christmas. Like, that's a good Christmas present. Like, you don't have to use pay no money or anything. It's a good, good Christmas gift. So I had a guy, I reached out to him, uh, asked him if he could do the edit. I was like, man, I know it's Christmas Eve. Like, can you do this for me? He was able to uh, get it done. And then Christmas Day, I know I talked to my granddad. We were uh, headed down to Bradenton uh, to hang out with them on Christmas. We usually always do that. And then I talked to Coach Wimbo. I told him, like, I might do it and not to tell anybody. So then Christmas came. I ended up posting it. I didn't even tell my dad, my granddad. I told him he was sitting there, like, telling my dad to check his phone. He not really on, like, the socials like that. So my dad was kind of curious, like, man, why are you telling me to check my phone? He finally checked it. He was just like, man, you can't do that. You got to let me know. Like, and then he was just going crazy. And then after that, kind of calmed down. But it was definitely a blessing, like something I'll remember forever. I feel like it's crazy just having to go on my own. I feel like that was necessary for me to grow as a man and being able to come back and just going through so many different things throughout my journey, it just like made me stronger, I feel like. So I kind of know what to expect. I'm coming back, like I know the standard of what it takes to win. I'm playing at the highest level and things like that. So, I mean, it's really a blessing. As far as defense, I feel like I'm a smart football player. I'm going to be able to line everybody up on the field. I'm going to play fast, uh, physical. I'm going to come downhill and hit. I get the ball in my hands. I'm definitely going to take it to the crib. Like, I feel like that's one thing I definitely do. Like, I used to play offense. So, going to get the ball, that's one thing I'm going to be able to do. So, I'm excited for that. But really just being able to add on to what was already a pretty solid defense last year, just bring in experience, an experienced guy, a leader, and then shoot, hopefully get a chance to return some kicks and stuff this year too. I just want to come in and win, like, that's the goal. Just talking to everybody, the main goal is to win the SWAC, make it to a celebration bowl, like, that's what we're working towards every day, like, and it starts right now, like, you can't want to win if you're not putting in the work now. So that's the main thing for me. Obviously, I mean, I got some personal goals, but I mean, that really don't even matter. As long as the team winning, like, and I get an opportunity, like, hopefully I'm blessed enough to get a chance to play at the next level after this year, but yes, sir. Come to a place where academic excellence meets cultural diversity. Where you can meet friends from all over the world, expanding your horizons. It's a place where learning extends beyond the classroom. Where professors are not just educators, they're mentors guiding you towards success. Where community matters, and we take pride in giving back to those around us. It's where athletes pour their hearts into the game, leaving nothing behind on the field. Where dreams take shape and futures are built. Bethune-Cookman University, where your story becomes a legacy. Head coach Raymond Woody Jr. and the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats are ready for the spring. And now it's your time to plan to be in attendance for the annual spring football game at Daytona Municipal Stadium. This is your chance to see the new signees and experience everything BCU football has to offer as they prepare for the 2024 season. It's the BCU football spring game, Saturday, April 20th at Municipal Stadium. Welcome back to the Bethune-Cookman Football 2024 National Signing Day Show. I'm now joined by defensive coordinator Robert Wimberly. Coach, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Coach, your unit was one of the top defenses in the SWAC this year. Um, what is the ceiling for the, the BCU defense going forward? You know, uh, you know, I think the key thing for us is we know we established a good foundation, but we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, just watching film from last year, you know, I was very excited about the energy and the effort, but we still got to improve on our execution. And that's what we're challenging our young men as we uh, review last season on film and, and being able to do some walkthroughs is really uh, building on having great technique and fundamentals uh, so we can be an even better defense this year. 
you're a SWAC guy. You played at Alabama A&M. What does a SWAC defense look like, in your opinion? You know what? I, I've been blessed uh, at Alabama A&M, man. We, we had a very aggressive defense. Uh, Robert Mathis was a young man uh, that I had an opportunity to be a teammate with. And, uh, you know, that's the style of play that we want to have here. We want to be aggressive. We want to be physical. Uh, we want to get after it every snap. And so, you know, year one, you know, I thought we were building towards that. Now with this recruiting class that we got coming in, I'm excited to see what we'll be able to do in 2024. Speaking of that recruiting class, run me through a couple of names who you think that the Wildcat fans will be really excited to watch this year. You know what, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm gonna have to start off with Raymond Woody III. You know, uh, he made a decision to come to Bethune-Cookman uh, in talking with him over uh, Christmas break and, and the wise, you know, he wanted to come and build a legacy. You know, he wanted to do something. He's achieved great things uh, in the Power Five level. And uh, he had one more year left. And, uh, you know, he has come in and uh, set, set the standard. You know, he's going to be able to help us. Um, you know, he got a lot of experience. And he had some teammates that he was able to uh, connect us with. One was Orin Patu. Uh, he was at University of Arizona and defensive end. 6'4", 245. Uh, he actually came here in December on an official visit and uh, was a great young man, you know, great personality. Uh, he wants an opportunity to play and, you know, with him having that experience, uh, we were looking for some length at the end. Uh, and so him coming in so far mid-year, uh, I've been real pleased with his work ethic and how he goes about his business. And then you got another young man by the name of Tremaine uh, Pastor. He came in from Colorado State. Uh, he had ties to Raymond Woody III. And, I'm just telling you, he, he's shown to be a great leader, uh, communicates well. You know, he's a linebacker, uh, 6'2", 215. Uh, and uh, I'm just telling you, I'm excited about those three young men. And then I can't forget Dallas Corbett. Uh, he's a young man transferred from UCF, uh, about 6'7", 245. He can rush the passer. Uh, and I'm just telling you, watching him in workouts, he can run run. And so I just think those four guys coming in, uh, going to help set the tone mm -hmm. and we still got some other young men that we're excited about as well. Talk about uh, one or two of the freshmen. Who are the Wildcats of the future coming in? You know what? We got Jay Cummins. Jay Cummins is coming to us out of Tampa Hillsboro High School. Uh, coach Garcia, a great uh, coach, been there for a long time. Uh, he was our first commit. He committed to us in October. Uh, he's been loyal to us ever since. I had the opportunity to watch him play basketball. He is aggressive. Uh, he moves his feet well. Uh, he loves to play. He loves to compete. Uh, come from a great family, and uh, I think we're going to be excited about him uh, in 2024, as well as another young man by the name of Cornelius Bass. He's from Edgewater High School out of Orlando. Uh, he, he can rush the pastor as well. So I think those are two young men that uh, Wildcat family is going to be really excited about.